Hey guys, today we're gonna do seven things that don't make guitars expensive anymore. Let's start with number one, inlays. So take a guitar like this, this Ibanez Gem. It has a very elaborate inlay. And what they did back in the day was they would take a template and they would put it on the fretboard before it was fretted and before it was attached to the neck. And they would use a router and they would route it out, sometimes like a pin router, and they would router out the template. Somebody else would cut the inlays and then install them. We kind of understand this. Now, if you look at this fretboard right here, you'll see those black outlines. You'll see black outlining all those green leaves. Well, that's filler, basically where the router hole was bigger than the piece of plastic or material that was going in and set into it. And they would use as filler. You see that a lot in guitars. If you look at guitars now, especially even inexpensive guitars, you see less and less of that filler because a CNC machine now just cuts this all out. It cuts out all the pieces, it cuts out the fretboard, and it can do it in no time flat. Now, does that take a little longer than drilling a hole? Absolutely, but does that make a guitar expensive? Absolutely not. Most manufacturers can put in inlays for only pennies over what a dot inlay is. Number two, maple veneers. Now, a lot of manufacturers will upcharge for a maple veneer. So what is a maple veneer? Well, unlike a maple top, let's say on this Gibson Les Paul, um, it is a piece of very thin maple, about the thickness of a sheet of paper. And what they do is then they vacuum it, check this picture out here, on top of a, another piece of wood. Now in this guitar's case, there's actually a piece of mahogany, a piece of regular maple, and then this very paper thin veneer of flame maple, this exotic wood. Now this really doesn't add a whole lot of cost to the guitar. A piece of veneer to a manufacturer at large volumes is not a very expensive thing to add to the guitar. In fact, it's not even much more than paint. So a lot of times you'll see a guitar with a maple veneer go for $100 or $200 more than a traditional top maple top guitar or maybe a painted guitar and you realize they didn't have nearly that much cost into it. So even though back in the day putting a piece of maple on there was a big deal, maple veneers have never really been a huge added expense to manufacturers and generally doesn't make guitars very expensive to do. Number three, binding. Now binding is an interesting issue because companies like Gibson put a huge premium on it. Let's explain that for a second. So you take the Les Paul Studio, it has no binding. And then the standard does have binding. Now, even though a lot of times those guitars can be identical, mahogany body, maple cap, type pickups are almost the same, trapezoid inlays, mahogany neck, same tuners even, same manufacturer and almost the same case. But binding is a really big difference. Now you could say flame tops and stuff like that, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about light guitars. So the interesting thing is about the binding. Now, is it a time intensive process? It is, except for companies have actually found a way around it. Here's one, for example, Music Man actually created a process where they take a block of wood and before they make the guitar, they actually router out the binding. In other words, like a canal. Then they fill it with molted plastic. Then once it's hardened, they put the block in a machine, let it cut out the body, and the binding is actually attached to the guitar perfectly, seamed and amazing. Now you could argue that this time old tradition of actually hand binding the guitar is better. However, you can't hear that and you really can't even see it. Most of you probably right now didn't even know that some manufacturers aren't actually doing binding anymore. They're pouring it in. So if a manufacturer knows they can do that and save the consumer a lot of money and actually probably give them a better product, it makes you wonder why they don't do it other than the argument of tradition. Number four is set neck. Now set neck might be a little controversial because a lot of people believe that it's a much more expensive guitar to make than a bolt-on. But the manufacturers don't agree. A lot of them will tell you that there's not a huge cost difference to making a bolt-on to set neck. That's why they have trouble with making bolt-on versions and dropping the price dramatically. It's because they come at it like this way. Basically, the only real difference to them is that instead of screwing in four screws, they're gonna glue it in and there's time for that glue to set. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of expense. Now you could argue that they you know, can't shim a neck if it's bad when it's set neck, but if you notice today, most Fender guitars and most bolt-on guitars, very rarely, next to never, come from the factory with a shim anymore. The process to make necks is so much better than it's been before that they know when a neck spring when it's bad before they probably put it on the guitar. Now the only thing that really drives the cost up of a guitar is a neck through body. But here's why. It's not just the process attached to the body by putting wings, it's more finding a good piece of wood that's longer. The analogy I like is this. If you go to your local hardware store and you find a two by four, and I said, find me a straight two by four, it gets a little tricky. 
but if I told you to find me a two foot section of straight wood, you could find a two by four that maybe has a twist, but one piece of the section is straight and you would cut it. Same thing with guitar necks. It's harder to get a long piece of wood that's straight than a short piece of wood that's straight. So that's where the set neck versus the neck through changes dramatically in price. But for the most part, set necks do not cost a lot more to manufacture than a bolt-on neck, so therefore it doesn't necessarily make the guitar expensive. Number five is pickups. Pickups are another thing that gets associated to a guitar being expensive. And there's some confusion on that, so I'd like to explain it to you. Think of it like this. A pickup is not a very expensive thing to make. It doesn't have very expensive components. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to manufacture, yet it has a big deal to do with the guitar, so it is valuable. Now, a lot of manufacturers can choose to make their own pickups, and that will help them make more profit because of what I said just a minute ago. But what they'll opt to do sometimes is go with another pickup manufacturer's product. Let's say Seymour Duncan or EMG, DiMaggio, Bare Knuckle, you name it. Now that is a different concept. That's a branding concept. See, the thing that's making the pickup and the guitar more expensive is that it's a brand. That brand gets a value for what it's done, plus its pickup has notoriety and it adds value to the guitar. So that can drive the price of a guitar. But the truth is manufacturers can have pickups made or make pickups that are close enough to those other manufacturers pickups at a fraction of the price, but they know it doesn't add the same value. So sometimes when you see a guitar being expensive because of a brand name pickup, it's really the brand of that pickup that's added that expense, not so much the physical pickup itself. Because again, like I said, you could make a clone or something like that pickup for a fraction of the price, um, or, you know, like I said, design your own pickup as well. Number six is photo finish. Now this is becoming a big trend. Now, if you're familiar with the new market of wrapped, right? Like they wrap cars, they can wrap decals around things. We're seeing that more and more, kind of like these guitars. This is a Steve I gem. The original series, the first year was using like a fabric, but this is a decal, right? So they put decals underneath the finish. Now that is becoming more and more. Back in the day, they used to actually paint the guitars. Custom airbrush painting, painting artists uh, was expensive. It took the time to paint the guitar, the, the artist's commission, right? It was, it was definitely at expense that made a guitar a premium custom instrument. But now all the new guitars that you're seeing, the majority of them are what they call wrapped or decals. And that's a photo finish. That doesn't really add anything to the cost of the guitar. You can print a finish pretty easily and stick it on a guitar. So to get a premium for a custom graphic on something that basically is printed and stuck underneath clear coat is not something that should be making a guitar expensive. It's something that maybe is cool and maybe a few pennies more than paint, but Realistically, it doesn't add a whole lot of cost to the guitar, so it's interesting that now manufacturers are getting premiums for custom graphic guitars that are essentially just printed decals. Now number seven is wood. Wood is another thing that makes guitars seem expensive or gets the manufacturer to add a lot of cost to the guitar, and that's because there's this idea that the wood is so uh, expensive. Obviously, if it, you can't get a lot of it, it's hard to keep the price down. But essentially, wood should never make a guitar expensive. In other words, a guitar should never be uh, a dramatic price difference because it's some kind of crazy piece of wood, unless that wood is extremely exotic. And if they have veneers, it goes back to our other subject where the value of that even dissipates even more quickly. So a guitar made, being made of mahogany over basswood it does have value and does warrant more cost, but it doesn't necessarily make it an expensive guitar, nor does making a guitar out of maple or out of alder. None of those th things should have a huge premium associated to them. Sometimes ash has a premium over alder, and yeah, it has some added cost, but it's just not enough to dramatically explain why the guitar just shot up in, in cost. So it's another thing that it's hard to explain that why manufacturers choose to put a piece of wood on a guitar and then charge it a mass amount of money on it. Now, again, we're not saying it's not worth more money. We're just saying it shouldn't make a guitar expensive. Now, it's important to point out that those factors I just mentioned still apply to small builders. They don't have the control that big manufacturers have. It's more about talking about the fact that a lot of manufacturing processes have actually got changed. And those changes have actually benefit the manufacturers more so the consumers. Like I said, they can put a premium on things. And if we don't understand what's going on, instead of looking at ingredients, we may look at branding and be buying for the wrong reasons. Now there's nothing wrong with whatever you decide to buy at the end. It's just about being educated about what it is that you're buying in the first place. Things I left out of this video on purpose were economics of scale and economies. And the reason is, is I think we all understand that if you make a lot, the price goes down. And if you make it in a country that has, um, 
a lower uh, dollar value, you can obviously save money. Those I think are obvious. I want to talk about the manufacturing process today. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Like the, hit the like button if you liked it and put please comments, put please comments, please put comments down below. Uh, as always, thank you for your time and know your gear. Thank <laughs> you.